So con continuing on, we're going to talk about plasma and serum. So we already talked about the formed elements. Now we're going to talk about the liquid component of the blood, which is approximately 55% of the blood volume. When we look at what's actually in plasma, about 7% of that is protein, 91% is water, so a majority of that's water, and then there's other solutes as well. So what is the difference between plasma and serum? Plasma is whole blood that is not clotted. So when you go get your blood drawn, usually it's like a lavender top tube and there's other types of um, tubes that they're going to put in or use in order to produce plasma, but at the bottom of those tubes are different types of anticoagulants. So they prevent the clotting of the blood. So then when you spin this down in a centrifuge, and a centrifuge is a huge machine that goes around and around and around and around circles so that all of the solid material is settled to the bottom and then the liquid, or liquid portion of the blood is on top, you'll separate it into three different layers. The plasma, the buffy coat, and the red blood cell layer. You can evaluate the buffy coat for the presence of the white blood cells and you can look at the plasma for the presence of certain clotting proteins because this blood has not clotted, all of the clotting proteins are going to be freely floating in the plasma. Serum though, serum has clotted. So they take the blood sample, put it into the tube, and let this tube sit for 20 minutes. A solid clot will form, and a lot of times there's like a gel-like layer that they put at the bottom of the tube, so that when they do centrifuge this, the gel will sit on top of the clot and then the serum is on top and it's a clean um, serum that you can do all of your testing on. This serum is oftentimes used for like your simple chemistry tests, your liver panels, your um, metabolic tests, and antibody evaluation. So if they want to look for the presence of certain antibodies, if you've been exposed to certain diseases or that type of stuff, most of our tests are done using serum. So here you can see the different types of tops on blood collection tubes and processing. So a plain tube has no additive, there's nothing in it, this blood will clot. A serum tube has a clot activator added into it to um, increase the clotting process and sometimes you'll see these gel and clot activator tubes and oftentimes they're going to be red with a yellow circle in the middle and we call those red gels but those tubes contain the clot activator to promote clotting and they have the gel in there. The purple or lavender top tube, this is done for most of our white blood cell counts, the white blood cell differentials. EDTA is the anticoagulant that you'd find in a lavender top. In the green top it's a sodium heparin or lithium heparin tube. In this gray top, it's potassium oxalate and sodium fluoride, and then the black one has sodium citrate, and so does the blue one at a different ratio. We also have pink tops that we usually use for um, neonate testing and blood type, blood banking type stuff. So if we look at the different proteins of the plasma, so we said about 7% of the liquid portion of the blood contains different types of proteins. These are the proteins that you're going to find. The major protein is albumin. Albumin is produced by the liver, so we can measure albumin levels as an estimation of liver function. Albumin maintains the osmolarity of the blood, which means it keeps fluid in your bloodstream. If we didn't have albu albumin, we would lose a lot of this fluid in the urinary system. IgG is a type of antibody, and that's an antibody that would be found in highest concentrations in the blood. Transferrin brings iron to the tissues. Fibrinogen is a clotting protein. IgA is the mucous membrane antibody, so that's going to provide protection in mucous membranes, and that's also the antibody that you would find in breast milk while well, IgG is the antibody that crosses the placenta to give the baby the initial protection. 
Alpha-2 uh, macroglobulin is an antiprotease. IgM is your initial responding antibody. So when you initially get a new pathogen that comes in the body, it's IgM that will recognize it specifically and um, kind of trigger immune responses against it. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is a protease inhibitor. Haptoglobin binds free plasma hemoglobin. Apolipoprotein A1 is the HDL in chylomicrons, and apolipoprotein A2 is just HDL. Out of all of these, now that you have kind of an idea of what you'd find inside of plasma, albumin is the one that you should really know about because albumin is our major um, blood protein. You can see it makes up a majority of the uh, proteins that you'd find in the blood. Other solutes that you're going to find include ions, nutrients, waste products, gases, and regulatory substances. These regulatory substances, primarily hormones, our gases are going to be oxygen in small concentrations as well as carbon dioxide, usually in the form of bicarbonate. Waste products, any toxins, like including bacterial toxins, any types of drugs that were taken, medications, that type of stuff, those are all considered waste products, and those can be filtered out in the urine. Waste products also include urea, and we'll talk about um, urine formation a little bit later on in the semester. Nutrients, so any types of free amino acids, um, transport all sorts of different types of um, like glucose and other types of you know, carbohydrates through the blood. So those are all nutrients. And then ions. Ions usually are bound together in an ionic bond to form like sodium chloride, potassium um, chloride in some cases. So they help transport these ions around in the body.